guys welcome back to my channel today we are doing an oversized faux letterboard wall art type situation and I'm currently filming in my daughter's room right now because my dining table where I normally do all of my crafts and DIYs is currently completely taken over by my work computers and all of that since I'm teleworking because of obviously we're going through this whole pandemic situation so we're gonna be working off of the floor today. I actually don't remember where I got this idea from but I did want to create a DIY where I had all of the stuff I already needed and I didn't have to go to the store and buy any new craft supplies because obviously we've all been sheltering in place for the past couple of months. So that was kind of like the premise of this project, to do it with stuff that I already had at home. To list off everything that we're gonna be using in this project, we're gonna be using some handy dandy paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls, just because I didn't wanna wait for one specific size. And then I have some leftover foam board from a previous project. It's just been sitting in the dining room for forever, so I'm glad that I finally have a use for it. Of course, if you want to do this project, you could use cardboard if you have like boxes. I'm sure we've all been shopping online, so I'm sure you have some kind of cardboard box laying around or that you'll be getting in eventually. And then to make our letters, pre-made letters, <laughs> We are using my daughter's bath letters. She's only two in a few months, so she doesn't exactly spell yet. So she doesn't really play with any of these letters when she takes her bath, so I don't feel that bad about taking them. And then to make the backdrop of our letter board, you know how letter boards usually have like a really pretty like felt or velvet? Unfortunately, I don't have any of that kind of fabric just laying around. I was looking through like old shirts, that had pretty patterns and I don't have too many shirts with pretty patterns that I'm willing to cut up. Um, and then I was looking at um, just scrap fabrics and I almost went with this polka dotted one that I used to make the pillow that they have in the room because I figured it would go, but I wanted something a little bit more subtle. And then I walked past this guy who has also just been hanging out in the dining room. It's just been leaned against the wall. And if you guys remember what this is, this was actually from Layla's old room. So it's a roll of paper that I had hanging in her wall. And then I just painted like this kind of abstract painting with all of the colors that are incorporated into the room, the pinks and the greens and a little bit of gold. And when we moved here to our new place, I didn't want to get rid of it just yet. I figured I was like, maybe I'll find a frame and then hang it up eventually. I don't know, but I didn't want to get rid of it. And so I figured this could be a really cool use for it. And then I'm going to be using white paint, a couple paint brushes, some Mod Podge, some tape, pens, you know, the usual. The first thing that I did was actually cut all of my paper towel rolls because if I were to just take these and then just like stick these together it would create this little gap here pretend this is the canvas and it would create like a little gap here so I don't want that so what I'm gonna do is just cut down the middle and then I just took a chunk out about an inch wide so that it could open up and then kind of just lay flat like so so the trick to doing this without worrying about flattening out the rolls is by using the edge of your table and allowing the roll to just curve on underneath while you make your measurement on the top end. So I just measured an inch from each of the ends and then I used my ruler to draw the line where I was gonna cut. And then I just repeated this for all of the rolls that I had. So based on the size of my letters and what I'm planning on spelling out, one paper towel roll plus one toilet paper roll ended up being the perfect width for this project. So I just went ahead and started lining them all up to make sure that I First of all, I had enough to even create this entire letter board. But surprise, surprise, of course, I was short. Two days later, we now have enough rolls to complete this project. I ended up doing eight rows. Seven of those consisted of one paper towel roll plus one toilet paper roll. And then I ended up using three toilet paper rolls to make up that last roll. Now I started putting it all together. So I'm just using a regular scotch tape to tape each pair of rolls together to make one long roll. I decided to tape it fully on both the top and the bottom just to make sure it was secure and it would have that seamless transition from one roll to the next. Once each of my rows were taped together, 
we're gonna address the issue of the holes on the sides. So obviously, if I were to just glue these open rolls directly onto my foam board, there would be the hollowed centers of each roll showing along the sides of my letter board. So I decided to create caps for each of them. I have eight rolls, so 16 caps in total. Since I'm using that painting as the fabric, if you will, for my letter board, I wanted to also use it along the sides so that the same print and colorway can just cover the entire letter board. I picked out a roll that had a fairly symmetrical looking curve and used that to trace onto my painting as a template for these caps I was gonna create. Then when it came to cut them out, I actually cut at least half an inch past the curve as well as below that flat end and you'll see that this excess will actually allow me to create tabs so that these caps can actually hold on to the rolls and the foam board. To create the tabs, I just cut out little triangles from the edge to the line of the curve. The spacing definitely doesn't have to be perfect, but the smaller the tabs, the easier it will be for each of them to lay flat against the roll. So now I'm able to take that cap that I cut, fold each of those little tabs at the line so it could hug that end of the roll, and then I just taped the cap onto each roll. At first, I just did a couple of pieces of tape on both ends, and then I did one longer piece of tape over the whole thing so it would be a lot smoother. But in the end, I decided it's just a lot easier to have a lot of little pieces of tape to kind of just tape the tabs down in smaller sections. So these caps honestly ended up really serving two purposes, to cover the holes, and because I use the same roll to trace each cap, it allows each of my other rolls to adhere to that more consistent shape because they're all following that same curve that I traced. Once we made it to the roll consisting of all toilet paper rolls, I finally cut it down to the width of the other completed rolls. So as soon as all of those caps were all on, I was really able to start putting the whole thing together and attach those individual long rolls together to finally create the letter board. So yes, we're busting out even more tape and super simple. We're just gonna tape all of the rolls together, trying to make sure the sides line up or if they're not perfectly the same length, which trust me was the case at hand, then just make sure it's lined along the center. Now that I'm saying that out loud, I actually think an asymmetrical letter board wall art situation would actually turn out really pretty dope. So I'm gonna have to write that down for a future project. Anyway, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you tape right at the ends of the rolls because again, we wanna to try to avoid those little gaps as much as possible, even though, yes, we're gonna have a way to cover it up later on. I pretty much used three to four pieces of tape to stick each pair of rolls together, easy peasy. And now we have to attach this flimsy thing to its base, which will be the foam board. I laid it on to make my measurements and honestly, I was probably being a little bit lazy because I could have done a much better job of making sure those measurements lined up properly. As you can see, once I was done cutting it, it ended up being too wide for my rolls and I had to trim it down on one side. When I had my foam board finally cut out to the size that I needed, I just brought out more tape to attach the rolls onto the foam board. And I started taping first the top and the bottom of the letter board and I just made sure that those little tabs that we created along the flat side of our caps were all sticking out and not getting stuck underneath the roll. Then when it came time to tape down the sides, I just pulled down on each of those tabs firmly, but gently making sure that the roll was making contact with the foam board. And then I added a strip of tape right on the edge of those tabs and along the back side of the foam board. So obviously part of the foam board is still showing but luckily I already knew this was gonna come up before we even started this project, so my solution was to do a little bit of decoupaging. I just cut off a scrap piece of that same painting I used to create the caps and started snipping off little pieces just in random shapes and sizes. Then I took my Mod Podge and small paintbrush to apply those little pieces over the gaps and the exposed foam board and really just along the whole edge so that it looked really intentional and not just like I was trying to patch up some holes but holy moly, this process took a lot longer than I thought, you guys. So I actually ended up doing the other side off camera and then let the whole thing dry for maybe 30 minutes or so, I would say. Once it was nice and dry, I finally got to start working on covering the front of the letter board using the rest of that painting. I rolled the whole thing out to decide which chunk of it I really liked and wanted to cut out. I just measured the width of the foam board directly onto the paper 
but I cut it slightly shorter than that width because I didn't want to worry about having to trim any excess later and I had already decided that I was going to be doing even more decoupaging along those edges as well anyway so that was just going to allow me a little bit of wiggle room to not need that width of the paper to match up perfectly. And then for the height, I actually more than doubled the height of the paper I was cutting out because I had to keep in mind that this wasn't just going to be laying flat. This paper was going to be curving over each of those rolls and therefore would require a lot more than just the flat foam board. So this is where it got tricky and I started learning all of my lessons regarding this project. I decided to start covering my letter board from the middle because I thought that would give me the best chance of keeping the paper aligned. I began with applying Mod Podge to the two middle rolls so that the paper could adhere to the rolls, but do not do that. I'm not even going to bother showing you how miserable that went, so we're going to skip over to how I went about covering the rest. I actually cut that rest of the paper off, kind of so I could have a fresh start as I continued trying to cover the rest of the rolls. As you can see from that third and fourth gap, it definitely wasn't as tight and crisp of a line as I hoped, so I started creasing the paper with my fingers before slipping it in between the rolls, which made a huge difference. And then I just grabbed a scrap piece of cardboard so I could just push it down as far as it would go. The paper actually ran short at that last roll, so luckily I had extra laying around, so all I did was just cut it to size and then stick it right on top. I also made sure there was enough excess that I could fold it along that edge of the foam board and be able to tape it down from the back to just make it a little bit more secure. So this is the part that I would have done in a different order had I known I was going to have all of this difficulty. So I would have actually covered each roll individually after capping them but before taping the long rolls together to create the letter board. Had I done it in that order, I would have been able to make sure that the painting was completely flush against the roll, that there would be no ugly little wrinkles, and that once I did put the rolls together to create the letter board, it could have a nice, clean, tight fit. But since we can't go back in time, obviously I had to kind of settle with the way that things were going. But once that nightmare was over and done with, I grabbed another chunk of scrap paper so I could begin cutting out more random little pieces that I could Mod Podge on. I just made sure that that last piece of paper was as tight onto the roll as I could get it, and then I started just decoupaging away. I was definitely generous with the Mod Podge, applying it to both under and above those little pieces as well as in between any gaps between the paper and the rolls. Those gaps obviously ideally would not be there had the paper been a little bit more fluid and a lot less difficult to work with, but luckily we're just going to be covering it up with this fun little decorative edging that we're adding with the decoupage anyway. This part finally had my back regretting working on the floor, but in the end I think it was just a really great finishing touch. Now of course you can't have a letter board without letters. These letters, however, were a bit too bold for my taste, so I wanted to subdue the colors just a little bit. I took some white paint diluted with a bit of water and just painted each of these letters, making sure to get the top and all the sides covered. Once those were dry, I flipped them over and measured the halfway point so that I could cut little slits into the letters and insert pieces of cardboard using a bit of Mod Podge. The depth of my letter board was maybe just shy of two inches, so I cut each piece of cardboard one and a half inches. These pieces of cardboard ideally would be what slips in between each roll to hold the letters in place, but as you know, I had some difficulty with the paper, and these ended up not fitting as snug, but I just still wanted to include this footage anyway in case you guys ended up doing this project and wanted to reference this step. Once the letters were ready to go, we could finally complete this bad boy. There weren't a lot of duplicate letters to choose from from Layla's bath toy set, so finding a phrase that only used one of each letter was slightly tricky, but Wild One totally goes with the theme of the room anyway, so I was glad I was able to come up with something. I played around with placement before I decided on its final position, and then unfortunately, since my letter board wasn't as tight-fitting as I planned, I ended up just mod podging the letters directly onto the board. Of course, obviously the original idea was to be able to have that option to switch out letters if I ever decide to do that later down the line, but I mean, let's be honest, I really don't plan on making other letters later down the line, so I'm totally fine with just mod podging it on now and making it permanent. 
Anyways, this is the final product, and despite the difficulties I came across, I think it turned out super cute, and I could totally see myself doing another, probably like more sophisticated adult version of this later down the line, now that I learned my lessons from this first go. All right, you guys, so that was it for today's DIY. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the project. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and sticking with me while I try to get more content out to you guys. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.